everyone. I'm Shaheen from The Content Mix, and I'm excited to be here with Kate Busby, Global Social Media Manager for International Workplace Group, or IWG, which provides offices and co-working spaces worldwide. Um, thanks, Kate, for joining us. Um, could you tell us a bit more about what you do and, uh, yeah, in your background and what IWG does as well? Sure. Well, um, we'll start with the, the last and then work to the first. Um, IWG is the, the world's leading provider of co-working and flexible workspace solutions. Um, so they have been around for about 30 years and they have presence in like 100, 100 plus, maybe 120 countries worldwide um, and, and heaps and heaps and heaps of um, flexible workspace locations. So um, my role for them is to manage their organic social media channels. So not the paid advertising side, but the, uh, yeah, the organic um, activity, um, principally on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, and Pinterest as well, most recently. Um, and my day-to-day -day kind of looks a little bit like content creation plus community management. Um, and we have several agencies as well with a company our size, you definitely need extra support. Uh, so we have a number of agencies doing the various different parts of the puzzle. Um, but I'm sort of helping to calculate the strategy and then look at results and then find our way um, towards greater visibility. Because I think as a brand, we've been pretty quiet throughout our 30 years. Although to be fair, the last few years, we've really mobilized in terms of, you know, getting on the key channels and actually creating content of value for our customers. So it's been a journey. Uh, it's definitely not over yet, but expect to see big things in times to come. So how long have you been in that role and how long has the role existed? Is it new or because you mentioned these are some new initiatives that you're working on? Yeah, I think our branding team was formed maybe five or six years ago. Our social media function around the same time. I've been in the role um, in various guises um, for about two years now um, coming up to. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's definitely um, a question of, you know, we're learning as we're going. I think we, we've definitely got up to date with data and looking at performance data. But, you know, as a legacy company that's been around, you know, for you know, decades, uh, where data wasn't such a big deal in the very beginning, I think it's definitely been a progression getting, getting up to speed with all the elements. And, and I'm super pleased that social media has now become, you know, a... Uh, it, it's become a, a key function and one that, you know, we see as having there's plenty of room to develop because we're, we're sort of, you know, still at the start, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like um, every business is, is having to adapt constantly because these things are changing all the time. Um, exactly. So in your, in, in your role, um, I mean, so are you in charge of social media in all markets or particular ones? Uh, how does that work? Yeah, so so we have a global social media policy, um, which kind of means that we have a centralized team serving all the different markets. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know we are investing in tools and platforms to facilitate facilitate social media on a local level because essentially social media is a local thing, right? It's about building local relationships, peer to peer. But you know it works best when it combines the online stuff with the offline stuff and the offline stuff has to happen locally, right? So we're trying to serve both the global and local interests with our social media. But yeah, when it comes to the actual management, it's centralized. Mm -hmm. so, so you're the one like managing all the different community managers for the different markets. It, it, yeah, effectively. I mean, we don't officially have community managers for all the markets, but we, we do have what we call content champions. Um, so the sort of movers and shakers in each market who tend to go above and beyond their job scope. You know, they're the ones who are networking off their, off their own back and building relationships anyway in their local communities. And they've, they've sort of embraced social media as just another method uh, to further grow their visibility locally and like build those connections um, online. So um, yeah, those are the guys who power our social media. And um, yeah, they, they don't have the fancy title of community managers. Maybe they should, but you know, um, they are definitely experts at, at what they do, and they're exceptional at, at social media and, and leveraging the channel. So I was curious because I mean, I, I, I suppose your audience are are businesses that you know, it's a it's a B two B business. So what? 
I was curious, like which channels, I know that that's like always a challenge to like, how do you engage with businesses through social media? So I was curious, like what channels you use and what kind of strategies you see working? Yeah, it's a real hot topic at the moment because I think with um, I think I've read a local uh, recent Kantar report that social media usage, um, particularly on Facebook and LinkedIn, has gone up by thirty percent since the onset of the global pandemic. So um, I think businesses are even more switched on to the fact that yeah, I've got to be using social media. But a lot of them start with how you know how do I actually you know infiltrate this world of cat pictures and selfies and actually create something which you know, as a corporate brand, we would be comfortable with going out with. So I think what best learnings to share on this subject, um, working for, you know, a a company with a 30 year history that in the beginning didn't really have much data collection going on is, um, is that LinkedIn is is definitely still the, the, the bread and butter of our social media strategy. I know for competitors, um, it's more Instagram, uh, but we're definitely not there yet. Um, you know, we're a solidly B2B company providing for, you know, clients like Google and Spotify and Twitter. So, you know, for us to sort of um, really sort of embrace the vines and the the, 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 the the Instagrams and the, you know, dare I say it, TikToks of this world, it's just, I think we've got a few more few more years or a few more, at least a good few more months before we, we find a strategy that works on those channels. But but LinkedIn definitely is the place where not only our corporate cl- clients tend to consume content, but actually the, the people who make the deals, so the property directors, the brokers, um, you know, the sort of influencers within the real estate industry are solidly on, on LinkedIn. And they're using that channel when they go to events um, to, you know, say, I'm here and, you know, uh, look for, for content and, and for, for hashtag conversations around that event. So so I definitely say that that, that LinkedIn is, is the best bet um, for B2B businesses, even now, today. I think there is some experimentation with other channels, but you've got to wait till the migration of the majority of your users go to those channels as well. And I don't think that's happened quite yet. I, I think for Twitter, it's, um, you know, it's still very much the second, second biggest channel for business. Um, but it requires a lot of investment. Um, you know, it, it's very difficult to use Twitter as a sort of content maintenance channel where you're just posting once a day or once a, every couple of days. You know, you sort of need a dedicated team or person at the very least to be, you know, retweeting constantly, looking for conversations to join, um, you know, producing content and sort of snappy, fast, witty observations or updates in real time from events. You know, it, it's definitely not um, a channel that that fully embraces kind of automated marketing kind of, uh, you know, it, it really requires a hyper personalization. So although it's a fantastic channel for reaching out to influencers, business people, potential customers, um, it, it requires um, maybe sometimes more bandwidth than the average social team, especially if it's for a big company, uh, can can allow. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, the, the, the traditional channels still hold. Um, but one that I am particularly excited about is the rise of Instagram for business. I think the number of businesses now that have a presence on Instagram is enormous. I mean, it runs into the millions. There are 1 billion active monthly users on the platform. So, you know, part of that traffic, that enormous amount of traffic, some of it's got to be for your business. Some of it's got to be relevant for you. It's just about finding out, uh, you know, where, where it is and when it happens to sort of be on the channel looking at content, what content it's looking at. Yeah, it's um, almost like um, your business lends itself to imagery, but for other types of businesses, it might be difficult to, <laughs> to identify like what kinds of images is appropriate to share on Instagram, right? <laughs> You're absolutely right. And, and I've been, but I've been particularly inspired by how, um, for example, the Financial Times in the UK which, okay, you know, it, it's, a, it's a broadsheet with images, granted, but it's not an image-driven publication, you know? Um, the images illustrate the text and the stories, right? So I've been very inspired about how the Financial Times social media team have 
taken the stories and actually created relevant content for Instagram. Now their captions are like much longer than the average Instagram account caption. And, you know, but, but they've really used the various elements on the, the, the interface, on the, on the page to, um, to create a very engaging and exciting Instagram channel. And I, I think when, when we were looking at, as, as IWG were looking at Instagram as, you know, a potential place to grow, we were looking at the more traditional companies that, that weren't necessarily oriented towards imagery to sort of understand how they could create such great content on that, on that platform. Um, but I think you're right. I think our job is slightly easier because, you know, one of our biggest assets is our, uh, our interiors, right? Our interior design, um, the interior design of our offices. And one thing about IWG that, that isn't that well known is that it's um, a very... It, it's an organization with lots of different brands. Um, Regis is definitely the, the longest standing and most well-known of the brands. Um, Spaces is kind of the, uh, it's, it's billed as the sort of WeWork competitor because it's looking at co-working and community and exquisite interior design. Uh, but we also have um, a high-end brand, number 18. There are fewer of them than there are the other, the other operating brands, but uh, you know, it, everything is about detail and beautiful vintage furniture and artwork. And so there are so many opportunities to take fragments of that and share it with our community on, on Instagram and encourage people to, you know, sort of explore our website and understand us more. Because I think one of the things that we really are knuckling down on using social media is just to be more visible, just to show the world what we do, what we what we have within our, you know, on, on our scope, within our, um, uh, our umbrella organization. There's so much going on. But, you know, if you're not online, you're not visible. You know, it's, it's, it's just the, the, the sign of the times. So... It, yeah, for, for a business looking to contact another business online, it's just resume, to sort of summarize, it's definitely all about LinkedIn and Twitter. But Instagram is the one to watch. Yeah, it's the fastest growing network. Traditional companies are flocking to it and they're finding ways and means of adapting what they do to really lend itself to making good content on that platform. Now, one thing is, you know, with Facebook, you have like the uh, global pages, the international pages and in the, in the management platform with Instagram. I believe you have to have individual pages for each market. So how do you handle that? It's a really great question. Um, I think the best way to respond to this is, is to sort of jump to one feature of Instagram, which we've been looking at really carefully, which is the um, Instagram location tags. Um, as a company that, you know, has... 13,000 employees, 2.5 million customers. I mean, these are big numbers. Um, there is every possibility that, you know, when you're doing local social media and creating new accounts per market, like you described, that there's an inconsistency with the branding that, you know, maybe the key messages of each brand get lost. You know, there's so much going on that it's very difficult to be consistent and to be high quality. So for that reason, we advocate having one global social media account uh, per channel. Um, but to solve the challenge of creating local content, local relevant content, or even national content, we're exploring the use of creating content around location tags. So what that effectively means is that each center can kind of create its own bank of images and, you know, those images need to be uploaded to people's personal accounts, yes. Um, but we're encouraging employees to use their business email address to create their own business Instagram account. Or if it's not an Insta Instagram for business account, officially, it's, it's just an Instagram account they use for their work life, not their family and friends life. So they keep them separate. And from those accounts, they upload content and tag the location of their center of their cluster of their region of their country and that way you know you you maintain your one global account which is perfectly consistent with regards to imagery and messaging etc but then for the building of the local community you develop content around locations so that's how we're attempting to overcome this this massive hurdle because it's true that that you know everyone wants to have their own community 
um, on, on Instagram. Every local market wants to build their own ecosystem. So to avoid creating 120 different national accounts, we we opted for this, this other solution. Let's so see the number works. of countries you're in, 120? Yes. Okay. Yes. Wow. <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be quite a lot of community management as well, right? So, you know, we, we want to try and keep lean always, always. So you're in charge of coordinating across all of those markets? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a completely alone. Uh, I definitely have the support of a wider team, um, a wider marketing function. Uh, and and then, as mentioned before, a number of agencies, Um but but yeah, the the sort of the social media function um, is is looked after, let's say, by me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then it, it, so in, when you talk about a global page, that's like in English, I suppose. Like it's one central page on that platform that's that's in one language, and then not not necessarily. So I mean, with LinkedIn, for example, which I, as I mentioned before, is kind of like our bread and butter for mm-hmm. our social media uh, landscape. Um, we we have the global content or what we call the global content which is you know um distributed to all our followers right uh, we have that in english but we geo target in language content or native language content through that same account to our followers in the relevant territories so recently for example um IWG acquired a Swiss franchisee. So we franchised our entire Swiss operation. It's now um, looked after by another company, but that's our close partner. <clears throat> and of course, they wanted to start building their LinkedIn following in Switzerland. And they speak uh, up to, I think, four languages in Switzerland. I mean, definitely there's three, and then I think that there's four if you include Italian, so four languages. And so, you know, they were basically using LinkedIn and geo-targeting through our, our core account, content in German, English, Italian, and French, to the various communities, the various French-speaking, Italian-speaking, German-speaking, English-speaking communities within Switzerland. So technically, we're using lots of different languages on our one global account, but we're geo-targeting them strategically to reach the right people. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Well, that's super interesting to learn from your experience working in so many different markets. I think you win for that so far out of the people I've talked to. Um, <laughs> so I was curious to learn about your background a little bit and how you got into content marketing in the first place. Sure. Um, well, I began my career uh, working for a contemporary art uh, agency based in London. Um, I went to the Venice Biennale one year just out of interest and passion for art and uh, met a group of people who were promoting Middle Eastern artists in Western markets. I thought that was a very interesting concept and kind of definitely of its of its moment, um, especially with the Arab Spring and uh, other political events really becoming prominent um, in, in Western media outlets. I mean, the Iraq or everything really in our generation and sort of raising questions about what life is like in the Middle East and what countries are like and culture. And I, I, I think that I agreed with the mission of the company at the time, which was, you know, we see a lot of stuff on the nine o'clock news, but we don't really know it. So let's try and know it through art or through, you know, artists practicing in the Middle East. So I found that very interesting. Worked with those guys for a number of years, doing various education programs in London, setting up exhibitions in Berlin. And, you know, it was very, very hands-on, very fun, small team, maybe seven people. Um, and then uh, after that, I, I met my now husband who, who lived and worked in Barcelona. We moved in together and I effectively started my career from scratch. I didn't speak Spanish or Catalan. I knew nobody in Barcelona. Um, the economic recession of sort of 2008 um, was still very much affecting uh, Spain uh, when I moved over in 2011. So finding work was really tough. So I eventually adapted my my professional profile to be more in the line of content marketing because there was still demand for that role and with my writing experience and um, experience in sort of working for cultural institutions and events it sort of seemed like a a happy-ish marriage um, to sort of take those skills and integrate them into a content marketing 
um, profile. So I ended up working for a number of um, agencies and companies, including Vice, a couple of local uh, companies in Barcelona, creating copy, doing some community management, uh, social media, sort of design and planning. And, you know, just a little bit of everything, really. Um, and then eventually I uh, ended up managing a team uh, and then moving from a couple of management roles to my current one. Um, so I guess that's, yeah, a potted history of my, my career. But maybe the most important thing that I learned along the way is that um, you should never stop learning and you should never sort of define yourself too strictly um you know I really always thought that I was going to be a writer and that's it and I would not compromise or do anything else but now I find that there's um not only uh utility in being able to pivot and take on new job roles and change your professional sort of profile and branding but it's actually extremely enjoyable uh to to learn and challenge yourself to learn new things um, which I never thought I would do. So, so yeah, I think that's that's definitely the the key takeaway. And and I'm I've now committed to a life life of learning. <laughs> and uh, and you know, relate to that as someone who changed <laughs> from journalism to to content marketing and business, <laughs> and learned a lot of skills along the way. But those writing skills are so fundamental in, in everything else. So. I agree. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so I want to go into our rapid fire questions <laughs> those um so basically a, a marketing influencer in europe who you would recommend oh without a doubt mark ritson uh every time i read anything by him i'm just in hysterics he is uh, no nonsense no bs marketer he's british but i think he was based in melbourne australia for a number of years so i hope he still counts as a european there uh well and, and with brexit as well i hope he still counts as a european influencer um, but yeah, he's definitely someone I look up to. Otherwise, uh, outside of Europe, there are, you know, the, the Neil Patels um, of this world are definitely, you know, ones to keep watching. The content they produce is, is outstanding. Uh, but yeah, in Europe, it's definitely Mark. <laughs> awesome. And then um, an app or a tool that you, that's essential in your job? Um, Maybe a lesson so from one. <laughs> The one I use, well, the one I use from day to day, which I have now developed a, a healthy dependence on, um, I think, is Percolate, a content management system um, used by IWG. I, I really uh, rate it um, because of its adaptability. Um, outside of that, uh, I really enjoy um, uh, Uber Suggest, um, which is uh, the aforementioned Neil Patel's. Um, keyword search engine I think it's um incredible that someone has created such a complex and all-serving tool that is completely well completely free no it's it has a freemium model but you can use it pretty much for to get the job done and it doesn't cost a cent it's uh it's astonishing everyone should check it out Uber suggest um, so those are my two content marketing from his part <laughs> bro yeah um, and then any like valuable networking resources or events in Europe that you'd recommend? Yeah, I, I think there are a number of Facebook groups that any content creators, social media marketers or content marketers should definitely get on, get on board. There's the, the content mix for, for, for European um, job opportunities and networking opportunities. And then a bit more locally, there's um, a, a Facebook group, group sorry, called Content Creators Barcelona. Uh, you need to sort of uh, request to join but um there's no uh, exam uh, and it's extremely active um I was always a little bit hesitant about these Facebook groups because it felt like there was just like one admin who was always saying yay let's you know motivation and you know blah, blah, and and there was no real substance to it but actually the groups I've I've just mentioned post jobs there are networking events maybe not right now but there will be again um, you know, it's it's a, it's very active. Every day you'll see a new job listing. So get on those. They're really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And well, any parting advice or comments before we finish? The the the, the social media is the future. Like honestly, I, I I'm not saying that just because I'm I'm working in that particular role. I've I've always, even when I was a writer in London helping you know artists with their with their careers um 
I always knew that social media was this incredibly powerful tool, but for the uninitiated, it seems like uh, a monster. Like, you know, unless you understand how to do it, like it's almost not even worth trying because it's so, you know, riddled with complexity and, you know, posting and, you know, getting five likes is somehow so demotivating and like how do all these people around the world get these millions of followers and these power accounts it, it just seems like this uh you know this thing that you can't quite access but what i've noticed now i'm much more rooted in the social media landscape is that it's uh incredibly intuitive not just to get started but actually to accelerate your following and get the engagement and you know build a business on social media, incredibly intuitive. And it really does deliver. Um, you know, the, the, the social currency is social media. You know, it, it, you, you can't do without it if you're a business. And when you've got it and it's working, it gives you an enormous amount of leverage for partnerships, for opportunities um, to, to grow. So yeah, the future, future is social, uh, definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kate, for joining us and sharing your advice and insights with the Content Mix community. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, we're going to have a lot more interviews like this one with content marketers across Europe. So see you next time. <laughs>